Coal of Africa is an emerging developer and producer of high quality thermal and coking coal. Their operations are in the Limpopo and in Pumalanga provinces. It has a market cap of 1.9 billion rand, but is currently profitable and pays no dividends. Not currently profitable and pays no not. dividends. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to offer some words of wisdom? Look, let me start and then Rob can come in after me. Interesting assets up in the northern provinces, now known as Limpopo, almost got that wrong. Vele coal project close to the Zimbabwe border. Makado, also up there near Luitrichot, now known as Makado. Interesting deposits, quite sizable, high quality coal, metallurgical quality, but a bit too far from the existing export infrastructure. You'll remember they had all those permitting problems because it was too close to the old gold mine at Mapungubwe. Oy, 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 they I think got through all of those. Partners coming and going. The problem, of course, is when coal prices are very high and you're developing a new asset, then that's cool. You can like get a lot of excitement. You've got going. a lot of latitude. Share Just price by was at 34 rands a share, now down at two. It's been a long and arduous sort of rollout. Ooh, and the very unhappy shareholders who've held it all the way down. Yes, and I think uh, you know they ran into cash problems, liquidity problems. Uh, I've just got an injection from a Chinese company for $100 million. Uh, so that's uh, stabilized the share price in these low two It should give them a stay of execution. Yes. Um, you know, they had a lot of problems. They had uh, environmental problems with Vele where the mine had to stop and they had to stop, start, stop, start. Eventually they've cleared that. Uh, and then they got massive rains as well uh, last year, which put uh, problems in some of their mines. And then the rail, the rail broke down to, uh, to the Maputo, they're, using not, they're not using Richards Bay, they're using Maputo Corrible. So they just Maputu had Corrible. this bevy of bad news. One after the other. Um, so, you know, finally they've that, that rail line's working again, so they're going to be able to export. They've had force majeure, but now they'll be able to export that coal again. And the one thing is that without that coal, they, uh, one of their loans, they don't get a loan from Deutsche Bank, they have to deliver a certain amount of coal. And that was a problem for them as well when that railway line broke. So that's slowly getting right. Uh, let's see if this uh, last deluge of water hit any of their minds that we had over the weekend because they just seem to have bad luck the whole, the whole of the last two years. But that $100 million, could, mm. could that help them through all this bad, look, uh, bad luck? Yeah. Are they back on a stable footing? Look, they had a partnership arrangement with Exaro where Exaro could elect to take a larger stake in one of their Limpopo mines they elected to pass. Uh, ArcelorMittal took a 16% stake in these guys to preemptively get a source of uh, anthracitic coal for their coking coal operations at Ferenichung and so on. So those kinds of things were net positives. They've also got a mine which is close to the old Camden power station down at Grootvle, which was an old power station that ESCOM brought back in service. So that's at least earning them some kind of ongoing cash flows. I mean, look, the bottom line is this company going to go bang? Let's just be honest about this. Or are they here to stay? At the moment, it doesn't look like it. This 100 million will hold them off, but they do need to start exporting coal. Uh, the coal price has stabilized slightly better off it than, it's, than its lows, but they really have to get that uh, export out of Maputo going. Um, I think at the moment they look like they will stay, uh, and let's see if they can get their, their business running. Is it likely that they're going to stay bigger than a 50% chance that they're going to survive? And mature management team. John Wallington is a former Anglo coal guy, so they know the game and they're credible in front of investors. But it's a tough business. You know, we are constantly reminded that when it comes to mining development projects, you really need a following wind in order to, you need to be, it's better to be lucky than to have, you know, and have good timing than to necessarily have the best assets. I think the assets are fine. The question is, what happens if, uh, if coal prices slip a little bit more in the next few months to 50 or $60 a tonne? That could be you devastating. You just told me Exaro is not going any lower. And if we do see coal slippage but in that's terms of the price... Again, I mean, Exaro has a market cap of 60 billion rand, and it has operations right. that are profitable at I, lower all right, prices. All right, all right. I was so trying so to pick up some inconsistency. Obviously yeah. not. Hot or not on, on coal of Africa? I'm warm. No, so you I'm can't be warm. <laughs> How many times have I got to tell you? You are either hot or you are not hot. Currently, I'm not hot. Hot or not? No, I just think it's too risky right now, so not hot. 